Hi, my name is Dan with ENS Security, and today I'm gonna to show you how to set up the license plate configuration on our IP system here. Before we begin, always double check with your sales rep and our technical support team to make sure that the LPR camera is set up with the correct NVR model, otherwise the configurations will not work. Also, for installation standpoint of view, always make sure that the camera is mounted at least between six to 20 feet high, and the distance of the camera to the vehicle being detected should be between six to 100 feet, okay? The closer, the better. And if the camera is not able to see the car directly, try to at least keep the camera within a 30 degree variance uh, horizontally and vertically. And now I'm gonna show you how to set up the license plate configuration on the NVR side and also on the camera side in the web browser. Now, one thing I wanna mention is make sure that the Internet Explorer browsers that you're using Make sure that you install and download any plugins that it asks you to, and also make sure all your ActiveX settings are enabled on both sides, okay? Now, even though your NVR may have a, a built-in PoE port, my recommendation for setting up license plate cameras is to make sure, if you can, connect it to an external switch, because that way it's a easier to connect to the web browser of the camera side, okay? So here, as you can see, I have both the IP address of the camera and also on the NVR. So the camera side is going to be ending in .146 and the NVR side is going to be in .151, okay? So make sure of course you're in the same IP segment otherwise you're not going to be able to detect each other, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log into the camera side and I'm going to input the credentials, okay? So the password I created for this example is ENS with a capital E 12345 exclamation point enter I'm gonna make sure I can see the camera okay now I'm gonna log into the NVR side and put the credentials there admin for the username and same password and the reason I'm doing this because you're gonna to need to toggle back and forth between both the camera web browser and the NVR web browser to input the configuration it will make a lot sense when I show you on the tutorial here okay so the first thing that you want to do as I said is when you have the camera mounted uh, one of the first things that you want to do is to zoom in to the area that you want okay so as you can see here on the live view there's a little button here a zoom plus and a zoom minus to zoom out, okay? So just make sure that when you're playing around with the configurations, the settings and the views, try to zoom in as close as possible. And if you can, try to have a practice car there just to kind of be parked there. So that way you have a frame of reference, okay? So that's one of the first things that you wanna do after you mount the camera is to zoom in to the area that you want, okay? The next thing that you wanna do is go to the setup menu, okay? And then under the system menu here, there's something called photo server, okay? And you're gonna see right now why you wanna have the NVR tab open, okay? So if you look at the photo server tab, you have a server IP, the server port, and some information that you need to put in. The server IP and the server port is actually the information you need to put in from the NVR, okay? So that's why you want, like I said, you wanna have the NVR web browser open so you can toggle back and forth between the settings. So if you go into the NVR web browser, and then you go to setup, and then you go under where it says platform, under this tab where it says video image data, you wanna make sure it's on, okay? And then you see the server address, which is 192.168.0.151, which is pretty much the IP address of the NVR. And then the server port is the 5073, okay? So when you go back in the system tab of the camera, the server IP is that IP address of the NVR that you're gonna input here. So I put in the 192.168.0.151 as an example. The server port is going to be 5073, as you saw in the tab of the NVR, okay? The platform communication type is gonna be video, image, and database, and then the device ID. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. Uh, there's not a lot of information that's given, so the device ID for a frame of reference, it has to be 20 digits long, okay? So, uh, digits 11, 12, and 13 have to be very specific numbers, 119, okay? So the first 10 digits can be anything, like all zeros as an example. And then everything after the 119, you can put whatever uh, digits that you want, okay? So I have uh, the 20 digits here. The username is gonna be the username of the NVR, which is admin, lowercase. And the platform assets code is gonna be uh, another way of saying the uh, password of the NVR, which was the ENS12345 
exclamation point with a capital E, okay? Down here, you're gonna see a video and image database settings, and then you can check which uh, options that you want. So since we're doing motor vehicles, you can check that option as well too, okay? So once that site is done, uh, of course, network. This is, of course, where you set the network IP address of the camera to make sure it's in the same uh, IP segment as the NVR, but that should have been done prior to the configuration, okay? Next, you're gonna go to Smart. And then under Smart, this is where you're going to have uh, set the detection region of where you're gonna draw the box where it's gonna cover the photo uh, area of the license plate. Now, keep in mind that depending on which browser you use, I prefer to use the Internet Explorer. Sometimes the browser may have plugin issues. So for example, like right here, sometimes um, it might just show kind of gray and you can't see anything. So you're kind of wondering, how can I draw the detection region if I can't see that? If that's the case, no problem. Go back to Live View. And then if you see here, down here, there's a little button called Setup Wizard. Go ahead and click on that. And then you can see here, there's a blue box. Okay, that's the detection region. So you can actually redraw that. And then there's a little checkbox here called Enable Horizontal Reference for Plate. So that's actually a line that you can actually draw a snap line over the license plate, okay? So once that blue box is drawn, click OK, and then you should be all right, okay? If no changes have been made, it's gonna state that as well. So once that side is done, just go ahead, double check all your settings, okay? And then of course, uh, verify that you forget nothing, and then if everything's okay, then we're gonna go over to the NVR side, okay? So we click on the NVR tab, and then we're gonna go to the client side, Go to Intelligent Mark, make sure that's on. We're gonna go to the camera side. And under camera, we're gonna go to the schedule. And then there's two recording schedules that you can set up. One's called the, just a basic recording schedule, and the other is a snapshot schedule. Now, one thing I wanna mention, if you just do the event schedule, uh, when you do the snapshots and you click on it, uh, you're not gonna get a fluid video. So my pr preference is to use the normal schedule, okay? And you do that by clicking on Edit, Select normal and then you copy to all the days that you want and then click OK. And then you can see the schedule here from Monday through Sunday is going to be all blue. Once that's done, click save and you're going to do the same thing on the snapshot side. Click edit, make sure everything is all normal and copy to all the days that you want. All right, so once that's done, then what you're going to do now is go to the platform side and then under the video and image data, there's going to be some settings here. Okay, remember earlier that we had the uh, the settings for the image, uh, the server address and the port number where we put in the camera side. So you're gonna make sure that's on, okay? And the server address, again, same thing, is the 192.168.0.151, which is the IP address of the, uh, the NVR itself. And of course, you can get that information here as well under the network settings, okay? So once that's inputted, uh, server port is 5073 by default. Username is gonna be admin and then the password is going to be uh, ENS12345 with a capital E with an exclamation point at the end or whatever you set it to, okay? And then you're going to click save and then next you're going to go to where it says configure VIID local. Okay, so since this camera is set to D1, the channel ID, which is that 20 digit code, you're going to get from the this side of the camera, okay? So under system and then the photo server, that 20 digit ID code that we inputted earlier, you're gonna copy that and you're gonna input it here where it says channel ID for D1, okay? Device type, you're gonna put license plate recognition and then you're gonna click on advanced and then it's gonna ask you to put in some parameters here. So longitude, latitude, uh, you can just kind of put in some random numbers. So for example, I put in 35 and 35 just to fill it in. The administrative division, uh, unless it's a specific division in that particular county or city, you can put in whatever numbers, but it's usually a uh, seven, six to seven digit code, okay? Location, you can manually type in whatever city that you have. The checkpoint put into use, uh, whatever particular date that you have, you can put that in the calendar here. Uh, the checkpoint type, it gives you some options, for example, inner city, interest city, or whatever it is that your situation is, so select that as well too. And the uh, type that you're using, you can just put as an example, security checkpoint. Checkpoint lanes, uh, since we're only covering one lane for one camera, we'll just put one. And the authority code can just be anything, a 12 digit code. And in this example, I put in uh, 12 nines. Once that's done, you click OK. And as soon as that's done, the status should go from offline to online, OK? So once that's done, your configurations is pretty much set on the camera side and also on the uh, NVR side through the web browser. 
Now, keep in mind that there are some settings that you cannot see in the web browser, like the live snapshots. However, on the web browser, you can see the snapshots that the uh, system has taken. So for example, if you go to Smart, and then you go under where it says VCA Search, you go under the Vehicle Search, and then you select which camera, in our example, D1, okay, and then you select the starting time and the end time, and then the parameters, hit Search, and as you can see throughout today, we had some examples of a plate capture. So for example, if I click on a specific one, like this white car, for example, you can see that the plate shows a particular plate number, okay? So that's how you search for it on the web browser and set up on the configuration side. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the NVR interface and show you how to set up the live display, and we're gonna demonstrate that in action. Now I'm gonna set up the configuration on the NVR side so you can see the live snapshot, okay? So before we do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the live view of the camera, right click on the mouse, and then I'm gonna go to where it says preview mode and then go to where it says smart, okay? Then on the right hand side here, you can see some snapshots have already taken place, but in order to configure that correctly, I'm gonna click on the little gear icon, enter my password of the recorder that I set up earlier, Okay, and then under this smart display configuration, you see a couple of options. So you're gonna go over to vehicle recognition, and then you see a couple of uh, options here. Okay, so I can check the display vehicle snapshot info, which will include the, uh, the plate number, the plate color, the channel, and also the time. And you can also check the other options as well too, but those are just optional. Once that's done, I'm gonna click okay, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a live car drive through the detection area and we're gonna to try to get a couple of snapshots in action, okay? So let's see that now. Okay, so as you can see, it just got it. So the license plate read 7SFC401. So in order to do the playback, I'm gonna double click. And then as you can see here, It got the plate number, okay? And that's how you do it. And that concludes our tutorial on how to set up the license plate recognition on our IP system. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get notified on future videos and news. Once again, thanks for watching.